all the participants to this webinar. This webinar has been organized with the theme, Innovative Approach of Research in Inmuladvia to share and disseminate the suggestions, ideas of research on Unani drugs on a large scale. The main aim and objective of today's webinar is to update and revalidate the concept and principles of Unani system of medicine on present research standards or modern research tools. To establish the scientific interpretation of Unani concept from a new part of view, to convince the mainstream medicine and to popularize and promote Unani system of medicine worldwide. I hope the lectures of eminent speakers of today's webinar will boost a new dimensions to our thoughts for better research approach in Unani medicine. So once again, I welcome the speakers and participants to this webinar. The distinguished speakers of today's webinar need no introduction, but still to fulfill the formality, I will be giving a brief introduction of them. The first speaker of today's webinar is Professor Abdul Wadu, sir, is an alumnus of Ajmal Khan Tibia College, Aligarh. After serving as HOD of Ilmulagbia, National Institute of Unani Medicine, Bangalore, Sir is presently working as Director of National Institute of Unani Medicine, Bangalore. Sir has been bestowed with many awards, like Best Teacher Award from CCIM, Minister of Ayush, Government of India, Ahmed Ashraf Memorial Award, and International Research Peace Award. Sir is having more than two decades of teaching experience. To his credit, he is having more than 17, 70 publications in national and international research journal. And Sir is also an author of four books, and he has guided about 33 PG scholars and two PhD scholars. Sir is editor-in-chief of two scientific journals, reviewers of dozen national and international journals. Sir has been the member of many committees like Institutional Ethical Committee for Biomedical Research, Institutional Animal Ethics Committee, Scientific Advisory Committee, and also a member of Pharmacopoeia Commission, uh, Commission etc., for to develop the Unani system of medicine. With this brief introduction, I request Professor Abdul Wadu sir to present his talk on integrative approach of research in Ilmulagia. Over to you, sir. Over to Professor Abdul Wadu, sir. Sir, you may start your talk now.
Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Sir. <clears throat> Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Very good morning to all of you. Respected Professor Huwal Muhammad Yusuf Amin, my teacher and a well known scientist of Ilmul Adbiya, Professor Ghulamuddin Sofi, my colleagues and uh, all the participants. Once again, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, sorry for a little bit delay because of some technical problems. So my topic of presentation today is integrative approach for research in Yunani medicine with particular reference to Ilmu Ladviya. So the major portion of my presentation will be an introductory part क्या हो गया बंकी हो गया
फिर क्या हुआ भाई चालू की नहीं हो रही है सर प्लीज होल्ड ऑन फॉर अ मिनट देर एन टेक्निकल इश्यू Assalamualaikum. आवाज नहीं आ रही है क्या प्रॉब्लम है सॉल्व कीजिए जजाक Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir
uh, I would like to quote uh, a quotation of Hippocrates. That is, there are in fact two things. One is science, and the other one is opinion. The former begets knowledge, and the latter ignorance. So, we will talk in terms of science, not in terms uh, in terms of opinion. So, whatever I would present here, it means it is science and not my opinion. So, as I told my. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, major part of presentation would be the introductory part because uh, before introducing the integrative approach, it would not be uh, fit for understanding the matter. So, <clears throat> as my introduction, assimilation of modern research parameters in Nani medicine should be for revalidation, for exactitude, for objectivity, and for quantification in contemporary understanding. What is the present status of Unani science? That is, most of its fundamentals are not understandable in a very easy manner. It requires such a certain objectivity and quantification uh, <clears throat> in terms of quantitative data. And that uh, assimilation of modern parameter is not just for uh, uh, an uh, opinion, but it should be for revalidation of Unani medicine, uh, in particular Ilmul Adviya. There is another problem that is uh, holism versus reductionist approach in uh, modern and Unani science. Unani medicine is based mostly on holism, whereas the modern parameters or more modern science or modern medical science is mostly based on reduction, reductionist approach. So to uh, bring both the sciences parallel is a major problem and we should think about it. Quantitative is the most appropriately applicable in any drug science. Integrated approach in some cases is appropriate and suitable. Integrative approach is, is such an approach which cannot be uh, Suit, suit or which cannot suit or be fit for all uh, concepts of Unani medicine. And everybody knows that research is inevitable for development of knowledge. Any knowledge, any branch of science cannot be up to date without any research. So research is in, uh, inevitable in Unani medicine also. But the problem is what type of research should be applicable in Unani medicine. Another problem is the why should we focus on integrative approach because present science doesn't accept just a hypothetical concept as most main, some of our uh, concepts are uh, not uh, materialistic. Therefore, most uh, look like hypothetical concepts and modern science, unless it is uh, uh, measured on parametric scales, the, they, they, the modern science just, uh, just don't accept hypothetical concepts. If we go through the Unani medicine and uh, its uh, subjects and uh, various, various disciplines like Ilmuladviya, Mualajat, Kiliyat, and uh, many other branches, so we see that Ilmuladviya is the most suitable and most appropriate subject for modern research. Many research frontiers such as standardization, toxicology, dosage forms, stability studies, detoxification methods, new dosage forms, modification in existing dosage forms, calcination problems, attenuation of objectivity in various parameters, etc. And many such other problems can be addressed with the integrative approach without harming Unani concepts. The core concepts of Unani medicine, like uh, Kulliyati concepts, if we go through these uh, concepts, uh, it is not a suitable, uh, Kulliyati is not a suitable or appropriate sub subject for modern parameter because uh, most of its uh, concepts are somehow metaphysical. But in Unani, but in Ilmul Adviya, there is a large scope, a huge scope of assimilation of modern parameter. So we will talk about uh, this integrative approach in terms of Ilmul Adviya. 
drug standardization is the most applied field of research in any medicine and even in the in, within ilmu ladwia if we uh, look we will find that drug standardization is the most applied field of research in any medicine for identity quality purity and safety these are the four important problems of herbal drugs or we can say unani drugs so it also includes standardization of whole process of preparation not only single drug but the finished products of course require standardization parameters for their quality purity and safety uh, another problem is that due to complexity of phyto constituents if we uh, standardize a modern drug or a conventional drug there is less complexity for standardization but in terms of herbal drugs or unani drugs we find that these drugs are complex and have very much a number of constituents some of them are pharmacologically active some of them are not pharmacologically active so these phytoestrogen constituent make the uh, a standardization method somehow uh, complex and challenging uh, in old concepts uh, identification by common properties like color order etc and some individual properties like sublimation melting and uh, many other sorry color order and some individual properties like sublimation melting etc have taken back stage and are of little importance in the present perspective because at that time hakim said themselves were very expert in identification and of all drugs but nowadays uh, this is not a weakness uh, uh, of the researchers or uh, teachers or students so uh, the identification methods have become uh, very complex and uh, uh, in the uh, on the other hand the uh, in uh, the, the traders are indulging in number of uh, uh, adulteration methods so making further complex for identification of the herbal drugs uh, there are some uh, Unani people who are insisting that uh, there is no scope for research in ilma in one medicine uh, on scientific parameters, and they say that uh, Unani medicine should be understood as it is. But insisting on all classical theories such as uh, is not defensible because they should have interpretive com component also. Uh, in today's term. if they do, we don't interpret our concepts so people will not be able to understand our concepts and the modern fraternity will not accept our concepts unless they are interpreted also these properties may be useful to some extent but for identification uh, but not for purity as these are not objective parameters conventional parameters like uh, extractive values ash values etc are also of little importance they are also a bygone era uh, after uh, <clears throat> uh, very cl classical approach uh, after some time there were conventional approach like uh, that, that that were scientific parameters like uh, extractive values ash values etc these are conventional and modern parameters but still now as they are of little importance because of certain reasons so the only approach remains that is analytical approach and analytical parameters like hplc hptlc lcms nmr etc used nowadays are the latest method these methods have objectivity and give uh, results quantitatively uh However, these analytical methods of of high end uh, research, uh, some of them are applicable on uh, herbal drugs also, but uh, all are not com compulsory for unani drugs. Even though we can take help from these parameters, why these problems uh, be addressed? If we see this slide, uh, earlier there was an organoleptic approach. 
less adulteration because at that time adulteration was not a big problem so uh, uh unani atibba unani physicians were based uh, on color order taste consistency of drugs like rangbu mazak evam these were uh, organoleptic characters of drug and these were uh, somehow enough for identification and safety and purity of the drugs because in those days adulteration was not a big problem later on adulteration uh, started to be a problem and these were the more uh, more adulteration with by and large uh, the traders started adulterating the herbal drugs or unani drugs so botanical physical chemical methods came uh, in vogue and uh, they were uh, used for uh, still have are being used but these uh, these parameters uh, like extractive values as values and many other parameters still they are being used in our some of of some values but not sufficient enough to identify the drug so the only uh, uh, method remains that is analytical method and uh, there are certain analytical methods by which we can identify the marker compounds we can compare uh, the phyto constituent and uh, even in case of certain uh, Uh, cases we uh, like in pushta in cancellation we can uh, judge the uh, uh, measure the particle size even which are not possible by organoleptic and uh, uh, conventional methods so uh, here the integrative approach we apply the integrated these approaches to the identification of herbal drugs or unani drug these will be of high values classical versus conventional and analytical method there should be a comparison between the these two methods uh, for example modern tools of standardization don't affect the holistic organization of unani medicine if we apply unnecessary and uh, interpret mindlessly some concept especially in concepts of kulyar we will wonder uh, we will not find ways to conclude our results because uh, modern tools uh, cannot be applied in all unani uh, branches so if if we apply these uh, tools on uh, standardization for herbal drug this will be a better choice classical methods became difficult because of lack of expert hands and no uh, depend on dependency this classical method like rangbu maza kevam don't give quantitative result and uh, are non dependence that's why classical methods are uh, of identification of standardization of herbal drugs now have become very much difficult analytical methods are must for research of unani drugs in the present perspective uh, together with the classical and modern approach analytical approach should also be applied for a better result do uh, it will not be accepted by many unani uh, fraternity but it is a fact and science has proved that chemical constituents uh, uh, found within a drug are uh, uh, responsible for their action do not do not a single uh, uh, chemical constituent but uh, so many constituent together with are uh, some total of chemical chemical constituents exert their action if we see is the chemical constituent and we compare with the temperament of the drug why we compare with the temperament of drug because uh, in our unani science it is said that most of the drugs act by their uh, temperament so what is temperament temperament can be understood in in terms of chemical constituents uh, in a more better way for example i will cite here two examples Uh, very often i cite these two examples in my lectures also coffee and tea both have equal amount of caffeine but coffee is more stimulant than tea when the chemical constituents are there in equal quantity when the why the uh, temperament why the mezaj of coffee is more than uh, uh, tea 
the explanation is that tea contains more tannin than coffee which prevents absorption of caffeine of tea this makes coffee hotter than tea because in case of tea tea all along with the caffeine tea also uh, has uh, some uh, amount of uh, uh, tannin that uh, in uh, it uh, prevents uh, the absorption of uh, uh, caffeine of the tea from intestinal wall so coffee is more stimulant so this uh, concept can be understood on the basis of chemical versus temperament another example is that murakkabul qawa uh, many people are often confused with the term murakkabul qawa murakkabul qawa is an established term of unani medicine to kulliyat al muladbiya this may also be explained on such lines for example raven chini in large dose is busil because purgative glycosides prevail while in low dose tannin dominates causing constipation so such drug uh, which have the mutazad uh, actions uh, mutazad of all opposite action can be called murakkabul qawa in fact uh, all of drugs uh, all drugs have are murakkabul qawa but uh, in most cases all the chemical constituents are similar and exert similar action so there is no question of murakkabul qawa murakkabul qawa is applied only when there are opposite actions in a single drug so when in large dose it is given like levanchini uh, anthraquinone glycosides prevail they are in large quantity so tannin is suppressed tannin action is suppressed but when in small quantity it is given it is not a muscle because anthraquinone glycoside are in little uh, less uh, in less amount it are not sufficient to exert their action so these uh, two terms uh, can also be understood on basis of chemical constituent and uh, analysis of chemical constituent is the analytical parameter so here uh, is uh, an explanation and the interrelation of temperament action and quantity quite a constituent i have tried to correlate these things for example phyto constituents uh, action is due to phyto constituent temperament is due to phyto uh, action and uh, phyto constituent exerts uh, uh, makes the uh, decides a temperament of a drug for example if more active and uh, more uh, phyto constituents are there in a drug its temperament will be higher than uh, temperament when there are the low temperament constituents are of uh, not of high quality so temperament and phyto constituent both can be interpreted for action of a drug so i would like to study as uh, a side here some studies which have been carried out in the department of ilmuladbiya national uh, institute of veterinary medicine uh, which have been uh, conducted with an integra integrative approach so here i uh, would like so to say first first example that is kushta and uh, because kushta is used in unani medicine for long period and it uh, kushta is the most tax is the most uh, uh, abused candidate of drug that uh, still modern fraternity is not accepting the kushta now they are accepting herbal drugs uh, plant origin drugs but uh, they are against kushta because there are certain problems like safety risk benefit ratio adverse effect hypothetical explanation of efficacy quantum of heat required for making kushta estimation of heavy metal and elemental part in the kushta that is the most dangerous thing intermediate compounds and final product particle size mechanism of action all these problems are uh, 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 attached with the kushta unless these uh, problems can be addressed kushta would not be a better choice to use and these all these problems can not be addressed in terms of uh, uh, classical and uh, conventional methods only all these problems require analytical methods and integrative approach 
कंसेप्चुअल स्टडी ऑन पुष्टा कामिल वर्सेज पुष्टा नाकिस A study was designed for setting up objective parameters for validation of Unani concept of Kushta Kamil and Kushta Nakis. Uh, modification of the original method. That is what is the this uh, this means uh, the methods appropriate methods uh, mentioned in classical Unani book. So Kamil Kushta was prepared by applying that uh, standard method, and this Kushta was called Kamil. and uh, we deviated from the standard parameter mentioned in unani uh, books and this kushta period was known as kushta nafis so these kushta were uh, compared because when we say kushta kamil and kushta nafis we are not able to understand what these two terms mean ancient classical uh, our ancient physicians uh, they were able to understand to know about the quality of the drug by their khwase khamsa zahira but nowadays we don't have such hawas hawas atabara tibba hai so the only option for us is to imply integrative approach to know about the kamil nafis the characteristics of the two kushta is mentioned in the literature are not discrete enough to distinguish require that services of uh, these expert which are not possible nowadays in those days uh, unani physician themselves were expert they, they were themselves the uh, machines the analytical method their mind was analytical but nowadays it is lacking so we are uh, integrate the studies uh, With the analytical parameter, so in this study we used XRD, ICPMS, FTIR, uh, scanning electron microscopy methods, etc. So what were the result? Uh, particle size here in KTN Pushta Tutia Naki Tutia was taken as example. For example, the study was not on Tutia. The study was on uh, a concept concept of Kamil and Nafis. Tutia was used as for example only. So when it was Kushta Nafis, particle size was thirty seven point six one nanometer. And KTK particle size was three point three thirty three point five eight nanometer. What this study shows that if if there is any minor deviation from uh, the classical uh, standard method particle size would be of higher higher size copper sulfate powder particles uh, the tutia was uh, powder was also uh, analyzed and the particle size was 82.67 uh, nanometer see the difference between on powder only kushta kamil and kushta nafis so what i mean to show by this example that means these minor differences could not be perceived by Our havasya kamsa zaira. They need analytical tools. So this is one example of integration of this study. Here we say in lead. Lead was thirty-eight point seven ppm in kushta nafis, and it was twenty-seven point zero zero ppm in KTK. Again, it shows that this amount of lead cannot be perceived by conventional method only. It will require XRD or ICPMS electron scanning microscope, microscopy, etc. Uh, another study was uh, conducted estimation of elemental arsenic by atomic absorption spectrophotometry. So we prepared that uh, two uh, two samples of Kushta one as Kushta uh, Sankhya that is uh, arsenic prepared by classical method. and the otherwise wa other wa one was by uh, muffen furness method so here again we say in classical method uh, the arsenic was found to be uh, 6.33 and uh, in muffen furness method it was just half it was only half of the uh, classical kushta uh, prepared by classical method so again this two, two, two kushtas can be compared with one another uh,
We are sorry for the inconvenience caused by power shutdown. Please wait for five minutes. Okay, is, is it okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. okay, okay. You can carry. So I will cut short my presentation. Uh, An other study was by the, by the same uh, uh, purpose. Uh, it was based on macroeconomics because uh, uh, we tried to know that if you prepare a kushta by classical method, a very little amount will be prepared and that will not be sufficient for uh, uh, distribution. So we tried to make the same kushta by Mapil Parnet method, which, which gives a big amount. So we compared the two uh, kushtas again. Uh, as in previous study, it was Kamil and Nakis. Here, it, uh, the Mapil Parnes method, kushta prepared by Mapil Parnes method and prepared by classical method were com compared with each other to know is there any difference or not. If there is no difference, uh, why not should we prepare kushta by uh, muffle furness method to get the maximum amount of the drug. So here I would like to, to by cutting short my presentation, I would show thus just kushta kapsul hadith prepared by classical method, the particle size was 14 and kushta uh, prepared by uh, kushta kam kushta abusul hadid mapil parnes method so again this slide is somehow confusing uh, classical method sorry sorry particles are uh, in kushta uh, kushta prepared by classical method was 14.12 uh, 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 and the same prepared by mapil parnes method was 23.11 so again, this shows a big difference, uh, uh, particle size uh, and the two methods, the two kushta prepared by the two methods uh, are not of the same quality in terms of particle size. So uh, it means here, if we uh, want to get uh, uh, less particle size, so we should prepare kushta by classical method. Again, there is a study that was based on chemical analysis of drug to prove the concept of Abdale Adviya uh, in terms of scientific validation. Uh, by scientific validation, we doesn't mean that we are not scientific. We are scientific, but our science is a different science by present science. So we have tried to uh, bring our science closer to modern science so for this, this study was conducted uh, in Datura uh, uh, and Hyosimus Niger, Ajwain Kurasani and Datura were compared and HPLC was run uh, because Atibba have mentioned Ajwain Kurasani as Badal of Datura Iskamonium. So why they uh, uh, see their magnanimity without any chemistry, more medicinal chemistry, they they have proved their concepts. See, the message of Datura Ceremonium, they have mentioned uh, cold and uh, dry in fourth degree, but that of Hyosimus Niger has been Khorasan is only third degree. Action is analgesic sedative, action is analgesic sedative. When uh, HPLC was run, atropine uh, in uh, Datura was found 0 0.30, but in case of Ajwain Khorasani, and that was uh, the point, uh, point 0.026 milligram. And the dose of the Tura Istamonium have been mentioned to be 500 milligram, but in case of Hyosimus Snyder and even Khorasani, it has been mentioned uh, on an average uh, 900 milligram. So here again, interpret and correlate and see the uh, science, classical and modern science. When there is more atropine, the tempera temperament is more and dose is less. When there is less temperament, chemical constituent atropine is less and dose is more. So here, uh, by just saying that Abdal Badal, uh, the, the, the two drugs uh, which are uh, uh, therapeutically interchange of one another, 
simply it is said okay it is okay it doesn't have any problem but if you want to uh, uh, show it scientifically we have to go with the integrative approach another uh, study that was analysis of the variance in the marker compound according to the age of the drug using accelerated stability model here uh, we took uh, muleti glyceride glabra as example and uh, sample a was kept in fridge at 4 degrees centigrade sample b was kept open in uh, room temperature and the another was uh, sample in stability study chamber that was at 40 degrees centigrade and the later we saw uh, that there was a, a difference in the three uh, uh, samples what happened what we wanted to uh, prove we wanted to prove that uh, a storage of a drug in suitable environment is a must because if we will not give a suitable uh, environment for storage we will find there will be difference in the chemical constituent variable they will vary for example in a Uh, percentage of glycine was 4.72 in b it was 4.52 and in c it was 5.07 it was kept in stability study chamber and the glycine amount uh, increased microbial load who microbial uh, says uh, it is it should not be uh, uh, 10 power 5 in uh, in case of free uh, sample it was the uh, uh, two times more in sample a and again the same but in stability chamber it was less so what we uh, analyzed that uh, in certain environment if drug is kept microbial load can be uh, changed it may increase or it may decrease so uh, again this is was not possible uh, without applying uh, integrative approach or a modern tool so all these studies that doesn't uh, uh, mean that uh, these are exactly uh, uh, applicable but these studies were uh, conducted only for examples to show how can we find uh, uh, difference in drugs because uh, just by a uh, classical method rangobu maza kewam we we cannot be able to know what changes are being uh, what changes are going in the in a drug we are just uh, uh, observing the drug by naked eye and we are using we are not bothering uh, that how much uh, microbial load load is there how much chemical constituent is there so my uh, concern is to show that integrative approach is uh, not only uh, appropriate but it is must for standardization and uh, knowing the uh, uh, purity safety and uh, efficacy of drug so thanks uh, that was my aim to show by certain studies how integrative approach are useful in uh, uh, research in immunology thanks thank you thank you very much sir sir has discussed the importance of assimilation of modern research parameters in a very clear way and has focused on standardization of unani drugs as it is the prime area for identification of identification of the drug by using integrative approach and sir has also discussed the interrelation of chemical constituents and temperament of the drug and also showed some example of research done in anaim by using integrative approach by using the uh, instrumental analysis to identify the differences between uh, the drugs to identify the adulteration and also to know the identity of the drug thank you very much sir thanks for a very informative and valuable lecture thank you sir now now we were, uh, if anybody any attendees is having any questions they can please ask to sir we have 5 minutes then our second speaker will deliver the lecture the participants you can ask the question we have 5 minutes for question asking session anybody nobody is there any question from audi uh, from attendees 
السلام علیکم میم وعلیکم السلام جی میم آپ ٹھیک ہیں ادت سر آپ سب کو دیکھ کے بہت خوشی ہوئی مدثر ہوں مدثر ہوں سر آپ ٹھیک ہیں ہاں سب ٹھیک ہے ہم لوگ سر آپ کا بہت اچھا لیکچر تھا جو آپ کا ایک پوائنٹ مجھے بہت اچھا لگا سر جو اجوائن خوراسانی اور دتورا کو آپ کو آپ نے کمپیئر کیا ان کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن کو لے کے اور پھر کوریلیٹ کیا ان کے درجات مزاج سر میرے دماغ میں ایک آئیڈیا پہلے سے تھا کیونکہ اب میں اکیڈمکس میں نہیں ہوں تو ایک سر مجھے امید ہے کہ ایسی ریسرچ ہو چکی ہوگی یا چل رہی ہوگی بیسکلی اگر ہم دواؤں کو ان کے مزاج کے مطابق ان کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن دیکھیں گے تو پھر ٹرائی کریں گے فار ایگزامپل ہم دس گرم دوائیاں لیں گے چار درجے کی اسی طرح دس ٹھنڈے درجے کی دوائیاں لیں گے چھوٹے درجے میں پھر ان کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن دیکھ کے ان کی سملیرٹیز نکالیں گے سر یہ جو ان کی فارماکولوجیکل ایکشن ہے ان کے جو چیف کانسٹینٹس ہوں گے سر اس طرح بہت اچھا ریسرچ ہوگا اور یہ تو کرنا کچھ نہیں ہے بس ان کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن اور فارماکولوجیکل ایکشن ان کے ایکٹو پرنسپلز کی دیکھنی ہے تو اس سے ہمیں آسانی سے مجھے لگتا ہے پتہ چل سکتا ہے کوئی بھی ہرب ہو اس کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن اگر ہمیں پتہ چلے گا چونکہ تقریباً ہر پلانٹ کی کیمیکل کمپوزیشن اب اویلیبل ہے تو اس سے ہمیں سیدھا اس کا مزاج پتہ چلے گا جی 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 بالکل صحیح کہا آپ نے اور آپ نے اس پہ ایک آئی تنک ایک اسٹڈی بھی آپ کی مزاج پہ ہی تھی حالانکہ وہ مطلب لیبریٹری اسٹڈی نہیں تھی آپ نے لٹریری اسٹڈی کیا ہے اور آپ نے یہ بالکل صحیح فرمایا کہ ہر دوا کے کیمیکل کانسٹیچوینٹ موجود ہیں سو ایک اس طرح کی ایک اسٹڈی ہم کر سکتے ہیں اور کچھ لوگوں نے اس طرح کی اسٹڈی کی ہے وہ سلائڈ میں نے یہاں پہ شو نہیں کی ہے کیونکہ بہت زیادہ سلائڈ شو جا رہی تھی تو آپ کی یہ سوچنا بالکل صحیح ہے یہ ایک طرح کی محنت کا کام ہے ہر دوا کی وہ کیمیکل کانسٹیچوینٹ ڈھونڈنا اور کیمیکل کانسٹیچوینٹ میں بھی اتنی کمپلیکسٹی ہوتی ہے کہ آپ ہم آسانی سے ڈیسائڈ نہیں کر سکتے جو بہت واضح افعال ہیں اور یہ معلوم ہے کہ یہ انہیں کیمیکلز کی وجہ سے ہیں تو اس طرح کی دماؤں کو ہم یقیناً کمپیر کر سکتے ہیں جی سر جی تینکیو سر اس اینی ادھر کوشن اینی بیٹی ایف دے وانٹ ٹو آس دے کین آس اینی کوشن فرم آڈینس اسلام علیکم اسلام علیکم سر والیکم السلام جی جی نظام الدین بول رہا ہوں سر پٹنہ سے میرا کوشن یہ ہے کہ سر یہ ایکچولی جو اس میں ٹاپک ہے انوویٹو اپروچ ہے ریگارڈنگ ریسرچ تو میرا کوشن یہ ہے کہ سر جیسے کہ ہمارے یہاں ایڈلٹریشن میں ایک بگ میجر پرابلم ہے سر اپنے دواؤں جی 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 تو تو اس میں سر جیسے کہ ہم نے کچھ ایسا ہو جیسے فوڈ ایگریکلچر پریکٹس ہے تو اس پہ کسی طرح کا ہم ریسرچ کر سکتے ہیں اگر فوڈ ایگریکلچر پریکٹس ہوگا تو ایڈلٹریشن کا یا اس سے ریگارڈنگ بہت ساری پرابلم سالو ہو سکتی ہے جی جی تو اس میں کس طرح کا سر ہم ریسرچ کر سکتے ہیں دیکھیے پہلے ہی بات ہو گئی تھی کہ آج کا جو تھیم ہوگی وہ یہ ہے کہ انٹیگریٹو اپروچ ہے تو علم الادویہ جیسا کہ میں نے کہا یہ بہت بڑا مطلب ایک فرنٹیر ہے جہاں پہ ہم سب سے زیادہ انٹیگریٹو اپروچ کا استعمال کر سکتے ہیں نو ڈاؤٹ ہم اڈلٹریشن کو بھی جاننے کے لیے مطلب ہم نے جیسے ڈیفرنٹ اسٹڈیز آپ کو شو کیا ہے تو اڈلٹریشن کو بھی جاننے کے لیے ہم انٹیگریٹو اپروچ استعمال کر سکتے ہیں مثال کے طور پر کہ اگر ایک دوا ہے جس میں آپ کوئی کیمیکل کانسٹیچوینٹ کو ایچ پی ایل سی کے ذریعے دیکھنا چاہتے ہیں اور وہ ظاہر سی بات ہے کہ اس دوا کا ایچ پی ایل سی اسٹینڈرڈ پہلے سے فکس ہوگا اگر وہ ڈرگ ایڈلٹریٹڈ ہے تو وہ بالکل ڈیویٹ کر کے اس کا ریزلٹ آئے گا تو نو ڈاؤٹ آپ ایڈلٹریشن کو پہچان سکتے ہیں کلاسیکل کانسیپٹ کو آپ پرو کر سکتے ہیں تو ایک پورا کا پورا میدان ہے جو خالی پڑا ہے بس ہم کو ہائپوتھیسس ڈیولپ کرنے کی ضرورت ہے کہ ہم کس ٹائپ کی ریسرچ ان میں پاسبل ہے اور کس ٹائپ کی ریسرچ ہم کر سکتے ہیں تو چند چند منٹوں میں تو یہ ڈیسائڈ نہیں کیا جا سکتا کہ کس طرح کی اسٹڈی کی رہیں اس کے لیے بیٹھ کے سوچنا پڑے گا اور ہم سب اگر ایک میرا خیال ہے ایک فورم بنا لیا جائے جو خاص طور سے علم الدویہ کے اسٹوڈنٹ ہیں اور جو ریسرچ میں بھی ہیں ٹیچنگ میں بھی ہیں 
तो प्रैक्टिस को तो खैर आप अलग रख दें लेकिन रिसर्च और टीचिंग में जो भी प्रोडक्ट है मुलतबिया के वो एक फोरम बना के ये बहुत सारी चीजें आप डिसाइड कर सकते हैं ठीक है थैंक यू एनी अदर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम पार्टिसिपेंट्स स्टिल वी हैव टाइम बिकॉज आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर इज गोइंग टू ज्वाइन विद इन फ्यू मिनट्स सो टिल देन वी कैन डिस्कस सम क्वेश्चन विद सर एनीबडी अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर वालेकुम सलाम हां मैं तनवीर बोल रहा हूं पटना से सर जी 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 तनवीर साहब बोलिए सर मेरा सवाल ये था कि जहाँ तक हम लोग प्रैक्टिस में जब आते हैं यूनानी में जी जी तो सबसे बड़ी स्कॉर्सिटी ये हो जाती है यूनानी प्रैक्टिस के पास दस दवा सही से मुफरत याद नहीं रहती उनको जी जी और नायम को अगर छोड़ दें तो ज्यादातर इंस्टीट्यूशन में नुस्खा नवेसी का लिखने खास के मुफरत दवाओं से मिला के लिखने का तो ट्रेडिशन ही खत्म हो गया जी 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 मेरे हिसाब से रिसर्च गैप है हमारे सिस्टम में कि हम लोग कुछ ऐसा नहीं कर पाते हैं कि इसको क्लिनिक तक खींच के ला सके जी जी इसी वजह से अभी एनसीआईसी ने एक किया था कि दो महीने इंटर्नशिप में होना चाहिए कि ड्रग के आइडेंटिफिकेशन को भी जोड़ा जाए हमें जाके सर्जरी ज्यादातर हमें यूनानी दवा प्रिस्क्राइब करनी है तो तशखीस भी नहीं होती और फिर हम नुस्खा भी नहीं बना पाते तो हमारी रिसर्च कुछ इस तरह से हो कि वो डायरेक्टली जल्दी जल्दी से लोगों के प्रैक्टिस को इन्फ्लुएंस कर सके जी 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 इसके लिए क्या क्या मॉडल्स हम कर सकते हैं इनिशिएटिव अच्छे रहेंगे देखिए इस सिलसिले में जो आपने बात कही वो बिल्कुल बहुत मेरे दिल के करीब है मैं बहुत कोशिश की है कि तमाम तलबा चाहे वो बाद में कहाँ जाते हैं उनकी किस्मत है प्रैक्टिस में जाते हैं रिसर्च में जाते हैं तो अगर वो प्रैक्टिस में जाते हैं तो ये प्रॉब्लम तो होती है उनके साथ की वो बहुत सारी दवाओं को ना पहचान पाते हैं और न ही तो उन्हें नुस्खा नवीसी का हुनर आता है तो ये कोशिश मैंने यहाँ की थी लेकिन ये कोशिश मेरे करने से नहीं होता क्योंकि मैं इसे मैंडेटरी नहीं बना सकता तो आपने जैसे एन के हवाले से कहा कि एन अगर इसे मैंडेटरी कर दे तो यकीन इलमुल अदविया डिपार्टमेंट इसके लिए तैयार है कि वो किसी भी डिपार्टमेंट का तारीब इम हो उसको आइडेंटिफिकेशन और मालजाती जो पार्ट है दवाओं का उस वो नुस्खा नवीसी ये दो दो चीज़ें जो हैं हम मिल कर सकते हैं और इसमें किसी रिसर्च की जरूरत नहीं है ये तो एक प्रैक्टिकल थिंग है जो हम आसानी से सीख सकते हैं जी सर इसलिए सर वो ज्यादातर जो रिसर्च हो रही हैं जो मैंने देखा करीब से एनआईएम में भी जी बहुत ईमानदारी से और अच्छी रिसर्च उसका रिजल्ट भी अदमियाओं का आ रहा है जी लेकिन जी जी। ये रिसर्च गैप है कि ये हमारे प्रैक्टिस तक टर्न आउट नहीं हो पा रहा है जी तो कुछ इस तरह से मेटा एनालिसिस हो या फिर कुछ फॉरम बने इस तरह से इनिशियटिव ले खास के जिसकी एक विजिबिलिटी और ऑथेंटिसिटी पूरे इंडिया में है कि हम प्रैक्टिस ड्राइवन कुछ मटेरियल्स लोगों को प्रोवाइड कर सकें ताकि रियल फायदा हो प्रैक्टिस जी जी सर में हमारी जो रिसर्चेस होती हैं पेपर पब्लिक थेसिस या पेपर पब्लिकेशन तक रह, जा, रह जाती हैं वो बिल्कुल सही कहा आपने कि वो प्रैक्टिशनर्स तक नहीं पहुँच पाती और ये जब भी पहुँच पाएंगे क्योंकि ये इंडिविजुअल का काम नहीं है इसके लिए कोई सोसाइटी हर सब्जेक्ट की एक डेवलप हो जैसे एक मुआलजात की है फिल्म लगविया की है तो आ, मैं समझता हूं कि हम ज्यादा बेहतर तरीके से इसे कर सकते हैं थैंक यू पार्टिसिपेंट्स एनी मोर क्वेश्चन ओके नाउ देर इज फाइव मिनट्स फॉर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर टू जॉन बिफोर दैट आई रिक्वेस्ट professor g sufi to be uh, give some presentation sufi sir over to you thank you dr najib uh, since uh, our next speaker professor yusuf amin saab he will be joining us for 10 minutes so uh, we try to prolong our session as a session but basically uh, when this webinar is going on we have various areas and we should move these areas so that we can discuss on them that discussion is very important uh, when we talk of this uh, innovative approach one of the approach is integrative approach which our beloved director professor abdul wadud has told about it and he was very much uh, emphasized 
how we can go for this integrated approach. Another approach is uh, what uh, we are pursuing in NIU, uh, specifically, uh, I am taking up these researches. That is how we can go for this micros macroscopic, not microscopic, macroscopic objectification of various patterns of mesage of Adria. And uh, which may help, which may, I am saying may, which may help us to enumerate the concept of mesage in a very, uh, very, very uh, objective way. Say, for example, most of us who are, uh, who are in Almul Adria, they realize very late that Mizaje Adria is referred to as the Mizaj of the drug when the drug acts in the body and it causes some cathia. And it is basically what we say, Arzi Mizaj, and not the innate Mizaj of the drug. Then these two Mizaj, when we say there are two types of Mizaj, so we have to see what type of Mizaj we are talking about. So whenever a drug is administered in the body, it causes some kefia in terms of kefia to arbia, arba, har, barit, yabis, and zatar. And in that way, if we can, we are able to see has it caused hararat, has it caused barudat, has it caused gabusat or rutubat, then we can say that we have authenticated the mizaj of the drug. Then again, the question is here can we say what is hararat and what is barudat and what is rutubat and what is gabusat in the body? The question is very much pertinent and it has to be addressed. Simple way of addressing it is that when anything is administered in the body or a disease comes to a body, it causes sui mizaj in the body. A person has a natural mizaj. If he gets disease, it causes sui mizaj. If some drug is administered to a mortal person or a normal person, again, it deranges the caveat, we call the sui mizaj. And that sui mizaj, if it is hard, we attribute the har, har, hararat to the drug. That drug is causing the hararat. Now, when I say that these kefiat are produced in the body, we have only one way to know it. That is what we call alamata sui mizah. Those alamata sui mizah, say, for example, we have, uh, we take, we take har, har mizah drug, we feel uh, there is too much thirst or there is too much appetite uh, has been deranged. Somehow, uh, these alamas, which are 11 in number for har, 9 for barudat, 7 for rutubat, and 9 for yabusat. Say, for example, yabusat, we have insomnia. One of the major alamas for yabusat, that a person gets less sleep. He gets more irritated. So, measure this less sleep as an alamat, and then attribute the thing to the drug, we can say we are able to know what is the result of the drug. And in that way, Ibn Sina has given us a protocol, what we say, how we assess a mizaj. Say, for example, he says that whenever you take anything, you just go with chaos and say what will it do to the body. We call it mizaj bil chaos. And mizaj bil chaos is done with two things, what is called argonoleptic characters and the physical property. Argonoleptic characters are very difficult to measure. Say, for example, in organoleptic character, we have taste, we have smell, and we have color. Color is considered a very far, very, very weak uh, domain for assessing the mizaj or making a chaos for a mizaj. Similarly, for taste, we say it is the most vital and important one. The argument, our physicians are giving that we see the color at a distance. With distance, we can see the green leaves. With distance, we can see the white eyes. But when we take a drug and then taste it, it interacts in our body as a whole with our tongue, with our senses. So we say this type of chaos will be more accurate than the chaos with the white, whiteness or the color, whiteness of the snow or whiteness of the sankhya. Simply, what I am emphasizing is that whatever it is written in our books, say organoleptic characters are assessing the mizaj bil chaos or the physical properties by which we can differentiate uh, two drugs of same kind but of different varieties, we have to assess them objectively so that we are able to say this will be the mizaj of a drug bil chaos. 
again, Ibn Sina says the second step you have to take, that is we have to go for the tajruba. We have to go for the experimentation. We have to go for the testing in humans. When we administer it in humans, we have to go for the natural tabai magdaric crop, which our physicians have defined it in a very different way. Uh, that, that, uh, that discussion will be taken later, later on. But when a drug comes into the body, again, what we have to see, we have to go with the sharaite tajruba. And sharaite tajruba, which Ibn has used, they are four protocols in seven steps, seven points. So what is with the mizaj, it is that it should be done with the motadil, motadil a hakiki people, then it should be the drug should be as it is, it should not have any arzi cases. And it should be a single drug and a single disease, which is for disease, it is a different protocol, but for humans, it should be applied to humans. These three points are very important for making the protocol for testing a drug in humans. Then again, our all Almanadia books are silent after that. But it says that test it in the human, verify the mizaj will chaos in the human. But then afterwards, it is very much silent. Why it is silent? Because they have a very good justification. Because when we administer a drug into the human, we know that it will change the case here, will arzi, uh, it will go for the derangement of the uh, mizaj, or arzi mizaj will be there. Some keshat will change. There will be hararat or yudusat or burudat or hitubat. But our kuliyat books have given us the way to find the suya mizaj. They have determined what are the alamat for suya mizaj. We have, we as a students of Yunani medicine, we have to take that literature. Those alamat which are written in the kuliyat book, we have to arrange them, we have to take them into consideration and then make a protocol in that way say that we can have, we can know what is the mizaj of a thing which has been predicted or will chaos its mizaj is that when administered into the human, we will say what it, that its mizaj will be. So this is what I say. This is one of the approach which is, I say, macroscopic approach. It is not a microscopic approach like if there are more tenants with coffee, coffee will be inhibited and there will be death mizaj. Maybe it is true, but for us in Yunani medicine, what we do, we always see when we administer it into the human, we see what was the change in the Keshat Arba. And the Keshat Arba can be noted or can be observed through its alamas. All those alamas are written in our uh, this, uh, Kuliyat books, uh, are in the various uh, books, we say in various literature, in our literature, it is present. We have to just objectify them. Say, for example, thirst. If we, if somebody is thirsty, we can measure it how much water it can drink within 24 hours. Previously, what was it? What was it drinking? And now, has it increased or not? Before and after administration of a drug, we can say whether the drug has increased the thirst or not. Appetite. We have a large vast scores are here. Uh, there are seven or eight domains for knowing the appetite of a appetite of a person. If we give a drug and it change, it has some change in the appetite, we can measure it easily, or we can go for the level even. For example, if there is more hararat, it is sari, uh, it is it is power in a bit lessened, and it is uh, this sari and power lessening of power. We can go for a pulse oximeter and we can see the amplitude of the wave generated, and we can guess, we can load these, uh, these voltages and other things, and we can correlate it very easily and objectify it. So this macroscopic approach is more relevant to Yunani approach, but I will not say it is the most relevant, because there are several other things which Yunani teach us. Say, for example, how to, how to go for the research of proof. Here we will have to take Larger aspect, the spiritual and the psychological aspect of a man, and then we see what our drugs are doing. So, uh, for this time, what we are able to do is that at least we can assess the mizaj of drugs by these alamat, and this will be another innovative, one of the innovative approach, what I call macroscopic approach, and what 
Kids of Capra say it is called the phenomenological approach towards medicine. Phenomenological approach, phenomenology has come to the medicine in 2004. Now it has been, it is, it is a worldwide concept. And even holism, holistic concept, which has come uh, to medicine in 2006, uh, it is one of the steps towards going towards holism. Then again, I will not say that this is the only approach. There is one more approach which is very important. That is logical and statistical approach towards our understanding kids. Say, for example, we have we have 1,200 drugs this time. We have their mizar. We have their dosage form. We have their we have their uh, dosage, and we can easily uh, go for statistical analysis in a big way, and then we can infer various various certain things. One of the approaches for Mizaj may be, which is very important, which we can do now, that is because of the advent of the computer, we can go for the factor analysis of the various causes or various alamas. If we go for the factor analysis, we can reduce these alamas into various domains, two or three domains, which will be very practical to implement. So these, there are so many approaches which we can go to, we can follow so that we can easily uh, we can easily go for this uh, advanced research in immunology. Now, another approach which uh, our beloved director was emphasizing, it was about this uh, using high-end uh, instrumentation. High-end instrumentation is very important, but the key is that we should have the technicians, not only the technicians, that scientists who are synthesizers, say, for example, if we go for HTLC, and we were seeing the lag time of various punishments in a one drug. In a Mokhara drug, there may be hundreds of the punishments. We have to summate those, log time, log, those lag times and then we can standardize the drug in a particular way. And for example, now we have DNA barcoding. DNA barcoding is one of the essential things we can easily go for the purity of a drug now. Like when we say that we can know the child whose parents uh, we don't know, and we can take sample of some person and the other child. We can compare and say whether he is the biological father of the person or not. Similarly, barcoding do take a very simple sample, take the DNA, then stratify it, and then it can we by computation by uh, by by making certain uh, this uh, calculations, we can simply reach to what type of plot it was and what was its species. So these are high-end research, which are very much important for us. But if we are not able to afford them, if we are not able to do it at every time, at any time, at any place, but this macroscopic approach, it is within our reach. It is within our reach. We can do it at any time. Only we have to use our logic and the knowledge of our classical book. Uh, one request, uh, Dr. Uh, Najib has used in his after. Hello. Has he joined or not? I'm not getting that. Okay, so I can continue. Please do it. Please continue the procedure. No, you said Musa has joined. Us. No, yes, I cannot yes. see. I cannot see in the participant list. I see. In no, sir. No, he has not joined yet. He has not joined, sir. You can continue, Professor Sutra. I think you said Musa has joined. We have some you said Amin is waiting here. Hey. Why? Okay. Uh, Yusuf, sir, are you there with us? Have you joined the webinar, sir? I guess I will make a phone call and yeah. otherwise Wait. I will continue uh, for some time. <coughs> sir, sir, I joined. Yusuf Amir sir has joined. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Imran. So, okay, sir. thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor G. Uh, Sufi sir, for putting some light on how to conduct the research on Mizaj of drug and Kafia Te Arba by microscopical approach. Thank you. Now, our awaited speaker has joined the webinar. So, Sir, are you there? 
Oh, yes, Swami has joined and shares the screen also. Yes. Okay. So, am I audible, Kubra? Uh, yes, ma'am. So, nothing is coming on my screen, therefore I am asking. So, our next distinguished speaker has joined the webinar right now. So, Sir is the master of masters and need no introduction, but to fulfill the formality, it is my proud privilege to introduce respected Prof Professor Kumar Mohammed Yusuf Amin Sir. Sir, we are really honored by your presence in this webinar. Sir is a legendary personality, widely known for his profound knowledge in both modern and Yunani medicine. Sir is, a, Sir is popular for his aptitude of correlative work between modern science and Yunani medicine. Sir has done an extensive literary work on Ru and focusing on holism of Yunani medicine and explicitly explains the supra material philosophical base of Yunani medicine. And by this, Sir has served the Nietzsche in the hearts of Yunani people. Sir is MBBS MD Pharmacology, retired professor in pharmacology at Ajmer Khatibia College, Aligarh. Sir has taught pharmacology and research methodology for more than three decades to the student. And Sir, Sir has published 50 research papers and uh, more than 150 ab abstracts in peer review research journals. Sir has supervised more than 50 MD, PhD, postdoctoral research projects in AMU, Jamia Millia Islamia, Jamia Habda and National Institute of Inani Medicine, Bangalore. So, coming to this uh, introduction, Sir is founding director of philosophy, science, forum, faculty of Yunani Medicine, Aligarh Muslim University. And his area of his uh, research are philosophy, science interface, principles of traditional medicine, mainly Yunani medicine, experimental and clinical pharmacology of traditional treatment, mainly Yunani drug treatment. And Sir has also served as the director of TIPA, that is fundamental issues in knowledge and its acquisition and director central for study research Hyderabad, India, and Director, Delhi Council on Philosophical Research Center for Study Research, Hyderabad. Sir is a faculty at Al Bala Academy, London, and founded keynote address in CSRS Islamic Perspective and Psychology, Law and Literary. Sir has also served as a member of the ending body of National Institute of Inani Medicine, Bangalore, and Sir is a recipient of Lifetime Achievement Award in Inani Medicine from AIMS, New Delhi. So I'm really glad, uh, glad to invite you, sir. Sir, uh, please, I'm uh, handing over to you uh, to talk on pioneering inclusion of Yunani principle in Yunani drug research. Over to you, sir. Sir, are you with us? Yes, ma'am. He's there. Just a minute. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Are you on there? You unmuted. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. Ah. You are audible, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam, sir. Wa alaikum assalam. I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am visible also. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, my presentation is on the is being shared. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, thank uh, the NIUM for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, uh, contribute my views to the issue at hand, that is uh, uh, innovations in uh, Yunani drug research. Uh, before I come to my presentation, I would like to apologize for the delay, uh, but I hope that you will excuse me in fact, I hope that you will appreciate that uh, despite me coming to computers so late, I'm able to do this much which I have done. 
So, uh, but still my apologies for the delay. Uh, the topic, uh, uh, but it, it would be uh, fitting, it, it would be unfitting not to acknowledge the help of my wife, who's an uh, associate professor in physics, and she helps me in such uh, technical matters. Uh, because my sons are away, otherwise they are the usual helpers. Anyway, uh, now coming to the topic of my presentation, it is uh, pioneering inclusion of Unani principles and parameters in Unani drug research. This is my uh, uh, topic. Uh, so, uh, the problem... Uh, the, pro uh, the problem is, <clears throat> what is, what is the problem? The problem is that in Unani drugs research, only a few of the in-use drugs. <laughs> Beg pardon? Something being said to me? No, no, no sir, no, please continue, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, the problem is that in uh, Unani drug research, we are not able to identify and select as test drugs, the drugs which are likely to have the greatest potential for uh, cure. Because uh, uh, our method of selecting the test drugs is uh, very incomplete. We, uh, uh, we uh, we se select our test drugs from the in-use drugs, from the few in-use drugs, which have uh, become more well-known. So we just go to the few mujarrab uh, or in-use drugs, which have become better known for uh, good effect in a particular disease. And then we just select uh, uh, these, uh, 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 these drugs uh, on the basis of their istemalate uh, ilaji uh, and at the most on the basis of their afal. So uh, we are not able to uh, identify the usul ilaj, the Unani usul ilaj or principles of treatment, which would then lead us to more effective drugs. Those usul ilaj will lead us to uh, more uh, uh, effective drugs, they will predict, they will indicate more useful drugs, which we miss. So the best possible treatments are missed. This is a very big uh, uh, problem, which has up to now uh, prevented the identification of the most uh, effective uh, Unani treatments by research. So now, uh, coming to the solution, the partial solution which is uh, right now in use is that, okay, since we are not able to find the best drugs, so let us make our survey of the istemalat uh, ilaji uh, wider. Let us make our survey of classical reports about the istemalat ilaji or therapeutic uses of the drugs wider. And secondly, we should uh, uh, also consult uh, the findings of uh, modern research reports if they have been conducted on, 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 on this uh, uh, drug earlier. And uh, then we should uh, select the drug which has been shown to have some effect in earlier modern research. And then some of us even uh, consult the experienced tabibs or Unani physicians for their experience. So this is the solution which we have made up to now. The solution of not being able to identify the best possible uh, test drugs. Uh, so this is the solution. But if we uh, think over it, then we are still missing the most important solution. And that uh, solution is the fundamental solution. And that solution is that we should select our test drug on the basis of uh, uh, the action predicting Unani principles of drug action. For example, Mizaj. Drugs are either hot or cold or dry or wet. 
so uh, uh, we should first uh, we should identify which uh, type of drug is likely to be effective and if it uh, is indicated that hot drugs would be effective so then now we have really identified the usul ilaj that hot drug would be effective now as soon as we identify the usul ilaj or principle then we can uh, then our uh, the, the 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 list of drugs at our disposal it becomes much more wider and much more relevant we have a big list of uh, 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 hot drugs and then we can select even even those drugs which are not mujarrab which uh, and uh, which have not been mentioned in most of the classical reports uh, or which have been missed by the unani physicians or which have not been studied by modern research earlier so despite all these limitations still there will be a good number of drugs available to us when we begin our selection by identifying the usul ilaj that here we should uh, 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 hot drugs would be effective so once we identify this usul ilaj that hot drugs would be effective so this will give to us many more drugs and not only the number of drugs from which we select our test drugs increases but the likelihood of uh, the effectiveness of the drugs is also increased uh, <clears throat> Uh, then uh, the other mesage is of course the most important uh, principle of uh, unani principle of drug action but then there are some other principles also for example fundamental afal now there is a distinction between afal and istimalat ilaji just as in modern medicine also western medicine also there is a distinction between pharmacological actions and therapeutic uses afal correlate with the pharmacological actions and istimalat ilaji correlate with the therapeutic uh, indications then uh, the afal ilaji uh, sorry the afal of the drugs or the pharmacological actions they can also be classified into two general afal and specific afal and this is so in western medicine also in western medicine also we can classify pharmacological action as non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, drug so this is a general action and then we can identify cox2 uh, uh, selective inhibitors uh, which is a specific uh, uh, pharmacological uh, action so just as in western medicine also the pharmacological actions are classifiable into general actions like anti inflammatory action and more specific actions like uh, cox uh, cox2 selective inhibition or steroidal anti inflammatory effect in the same way in unani afal also and uh, i hope that uh, all of you must have read al uh, the kitabul mufridat of al qanun where nearly 49 afal are listed and of course we must know other afal also but at least we should know the afal which are listed in uh, al qanun kitab al mufridat of al qanun so out of these 49 or 47 afal some of the afal are specific like mufattit e hisat lithotriptic action but other afal they are more general and i am talk not not talking of uh, mizaji afal like hararat aur burudat aur yabusat aur rutubat uh, for instance taqwiyat or tonic effect now taqwiyat is a very general type of uh, 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 fail of the drug uh, whereas mufattit e hisat is uh, is a is a is a specific type of afal so uh, uh, when we talk of uh, using unani principles of drug action in order as the first step in our selection of the test drug then basically we are talking of the misage of the drug but we are also talking of fundamental afal such as taqwiyat farhat inash etc so uh, uh, this is the most important solution and this is the fundamental step which has to be taken after which the other steps 
uh, also become more useful, such as wider survey of uh, drug for disease, consultation of earlier modern research reports, consultation for practical experience of the beeps. So those uh, uh, approaches also become more fruitful when we when the first step in our approach uh, in our exercise for selecting the test drug the first step is identifying the usul elagi so once we identify the usul elagi or uh, principles of drug action then we can go in for the other steps which are still in, which are already in use and they will become more helpful and uh, useful so this is the solution that uh, uh, this is the most important and fundamental solution that we should first of all begin identify the usul elagi which is involved and this usul elagi will of course include the mesage of the drug but that's not all it will also include some fundamental of all like the pyth for the Uh, uh, the problem is still remains with us because uh, uh, the the problem or the disease uh, on on which we want to study the effect of a test drug that disease is in hundred percent of cases not uh, conceived in Unani pathological terms but it is conceived in Western medicine pathological terms. For instance, uh, we try to study the effect of some Zidde Vajal Mafasil Advia anti arthritic Unani drugs on rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis or gout. So the problem is uh, uh, this, this is also a very big problem that uh, uh, the the disease or, uh, or the disease or pathological abnormality on which we want to see the effect of our test drug that disease is conceived in western med medical terms rather than unani terms now there is no such thing as rheumatoid arthritis in unani pathology um, uh, uh, in Mayate uh, Amras uh, or Unani pathology, there is no such thing as rheumatoid arthritis. So, uh, first of all, we will have to con we will have to find out the Unani counterpart of the Western disease because the Unani usule elagi or principle of drug action is stated in terms of Unani pathology. It is not stated in terms of uh, uh, Western medicine pathology. So, in order to find out the usul elagi, uh, the first step is to find out the Yunani, uh, to, to see the disease in Unani terms, to see the pathology on which we want to see the effect of a test drug. That pathology, that disease should be seen in Unani terms, not in Western medicine terms. And this is a process which I have chosen to call translation because uh, behind these few words which, are, which I am presenting, there is a many long years of uh, research and thinking. And so uh, when these uh, uh, points were being clarified at that time, I chose the term translation. That is how to find out the Yunan, nearest Yunani correlate of a Western medicine disease because we usually inevitably begin with a Western uh, medicine disease concept. Ideally, we should, right from beginning, we should see the disease in Yunani terms, but we do not live in a perfect world. So for various reasons, which are very obvious, our first understanding of the disease or pathological process, which we seek to improve by the test drug, our first view is, from Western medicine angle rather than from Uranic angle. Okay, no problem. We can, we should try, be proactive. We should try to solve rather than simply lamenting it. So a solution is that, okay, let us found the nearest Unani pathological correlate of a particular Western 
medicine disease, which is the first thing which comes to our mind. So then our this I have chosen to call translation. We have to translate the, uh, ideally there should be no need of translation. 100 years back, the Tabib was seeing the disease right from beginning in Unani pathological terms. So there was no need of translation. But now because uh, in more than 99% cases, we see the disease in Western medicine pathological terms. So in this context, translation becomes essential. And translation means finding out the nearest Unani correlate of a Western medicine pathological condition or a Western medicine disease. This I have chosen to call translation. And this translation we can relatively easily do on the basis of common symptoms. Let us study the symptoms of various Unani diseases which seem to us similar to the Western medicine disease, which is coming to our mind. And then find out which out of them, the symptoms of which of the Unani diseases are closest to the symptoms of the Western medicine disease. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, one very important feature is the hardening of the joints. So let us study the Vajal of uh, in Unani medicine books. And we find out that Vajal uh, Mafasil Balgami Sodavi is, a, is the one in which we see the salub or hardening of the joints. So we jump to the conclusion, happily of course, that uh, Vajal Mafasil Balgami Sodavi or Vajal Mafasil Sodavi, which is rare, uh, usually it is a mixture, Vajal Mafasil Balgami Sodavi is the nearest Unani correlate of rheumatoid arthritis because they show common symptoms of hardening of the joints on the one hand and the uh, of the mafasil on the other hand. So this translation can be relatively easily done by common symptoms. But of course, for this, we will have to do some wide reading of uh, Unani pathological conditions to find out which shows symptoms which are nearest to the symptoms of the Western medicine which has come to our mind in describing the uh, pathology or disease on which we want to see the effect of a test drug. So this is the process of translation. So now when after translation we have found that, uh, for example, uh, that is mentioned in one of my next slides. I don't want to jump to them because I want minimum chances of disturbance and error in this presentation. So we'll come to that. That will be shown in the slides also. I'm anticipating it. That uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, the nearest Unani correlate of rheumatoid arthritis is Vajau Mafasil Balkami Sodavi because uh, it shows the sallu uh, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis shows hardening of the joint. So this, this is because of these common symptoms, we can conclude, we can translate rheumatoid arthritis into vajal mafasil. I'll request, I'll request the participants to please mute their speakers that is disturbing the presentation. So uh, in this way, we can find out the nearest Unani correlate. Now, I always stress on the nearest Unani correlate because we seldom find one is to one correspondence. But we, we find rather easily, we find the nearest Unani correlate of a Western medicine path pathology. That's why I emphasize on this adjective of nearest Unani pathological correlate of Vajol of, of, of a Western medicine disease. And this we can do very easily, relatively easily on the basis of common symptoms. But for that, we will have to do wide reading of uh, Yunani Ilmul Amras in order to find out, and, and Walijat, in order to find out what are the symptoms uh, of various Unani diseases, which are likely to be the counterparts of the Western medicine disease, which has first come to our mind. I remember 
sitting down with my very dear student who is no longer with us, Professor Ufran, and going through books by uh, not only earlier scholars, but even later textbooks by persons such as Hakim Zulu Rahman Sahib, Sayyid Zulu Rahman Sahib. And in those books, we, uh, with a little bit of effort, we could find out that uh, tasalluq is the, is, is the symptom of Vajal uh, Mafasil Saudavi. So we inferred, we proposed that the nearest Yunani correlate of rheumatoid arthritis is Vajaul Mafasil Saudavi. So this is translation, translating Western medicine pathology, which with which our mind begins its work, its task. Unfortunately, uh, when, as I said, 100 years back, the Yunani Tabib was right from beginning he was visualizing a disease or a problem in Yunani pathological terms, but nowadays usually it is the Western medicine pathology which comes to our mind as a first step. But now we then we translate it to find out the nearest Yunani pathological correlate, which in this case we concluded is Vajal Mafasil Saudavi. Now, of course, it is child's play because uh, the Usuli Ilaj or the principles of treatment, the Yunani principles of treatment, they are obviously mentioned in terms of Yunani uh, principles of uh, pathology or Mahiyat Marzi. So once we have found out the Mahiyat Marzi, which is Vajal uh, Mafasil Saudavi, now it is very easy. The Usul Elaj would be a Zidde Vajal Mafasil drug, which also uh, is Mukhreje Soda, which is also a Mukhreje Soda, expeller of Soda or black bile. So now the Usul Ilaj is identified. And then we take the further step of finding out which are the drugs which are used both as Zidde uh, Bajal Mafasil as well as they have got Mukhreje Soda property. So again, working with my dear student, uh, we propose that bisphage uh, uh, is a drug which is reported to possess both actions. So then our task was easy and uh, we took up uh, rat model of uh, Freund, Freund's adjuvant arthritis in rats as the model because Freund's adjuvant arthritis model is considered to be a faithful model of human rheumatoid arthritis. So we took that model and we made the various groups. In one group, we gave Suranjan, which is the specific anti-arthritic drug in Yunani medicine, which can be given in any type of arthritis. And in another group, we gave bisphage which is anti-arthritic and also expeller of soda or black bile. And then we found that although Suranjan also improved uh, uh, the Freund's adjuvant uh, induced arthritis significantly, but uh, bisphage produced a greater uh, improvement. Its percentage inhibition of, of joint inflammation was much greater the effect of bisphage was much greater. Now, again, anticipating a later point, which I will clarify, inshallah, soon. We also tried to use a, a parameter which would be more relevant to the proper assessment of the Yunani drug potential. Now, in Freud's adjuvant arthritis, more than 90% of the scientists, they just use the thickening of the joint as the parameter. A drug which uh, reduces uh, the thickening of the joint significantly is considered to be positive. But we said that since here the parameter is the cell or hardening, which is one very important uh, consideration. So along with thickening of the joint, let us also do radiography of the red spot. Now, this is not totally unthought thought of in uh, Western medicine pharmacology because in, there are some versions of this test 
where the radiography is also carried out. But as I said, that more than 90% of the scientists just measure the thickness of the ankle joint as the parameter. They don't usually do X-ray of the red spot. But we said that this parameter is more relevant because the key thing is hardness of the joints. And from rheumatoid arthritis point of view also, it is a uh, more relevant parameter because even from Western medicine, rheumatoid arthritis point of view, uh, the uh, distortion of uh, joint architecture is an important thing. So we selected, this is the second point, we selected a parameter which is more relevant to the, uh, which, which is likely to give a better assessment of the curative potential of the Unani drug. And this was radiography. So very interestingly, we found that not only bisphage was shown to be more effective than Suganjan, but uh, uh, the deformity, the characteristic deformities, they were reduced with bisphage and they were not at all reduced with Suganjan. So uh, this is an interesting uh, experience which we had in this uh, innovative approach of uh, finding out the most likely effect, the mo most effective test drug by starting our search for the test drugs uh, 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 by uh, first of all finding the usul elagi and in order to find the usul elagi we have to find out the maiyate amras from Unani point of view, for that we use uh, a translation for, uh, 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 for, uh, for which we use the process which we call translation, that is finding out the common symptoms and then uh, uh, going uh, ahead. So this was an interesting experience which I want to share with you. Now, coming to the second prerequisite. So the first prerequisite is in order to use uh, the topic of our presentation is uh, including uh, pioneering that is now starting to include Unani principles in Unani drug research. So for including Unani principles, we have to find the Usule Elagi. This is one prerequisite. And in order to find the usul e elagi, we have to find out the mahiyate marzi, which we do by translation. But there is a second prerequisite, which I've already mentioned, that the improvement criteria which we should use should also be more relevant and not exactly the same, which is used by uh, researchers in uh, uh, Western uh, medicine. And I have given the example of, uh, of uh, using radiography, which is used by only a few Western uh, medicine uh, pharmacologists, so using it. So, this, uh, the first uh, the, so, so the first thing which we have to do is translation. And the second thing is we have to identify the uh, parameter which is more relevant to the proper assessment of the effect of the test drug. So first, first of all, our problem is to find out a test drug which is likely to be most effective, which we can do by identifying the drug on the basis of usule elagi. And for usule elagi, we have to find out mahiyate marzi, which we can do by translation. And then we have to find out the parameter by studying again studying Unani symptoms, uh, which is which will be uh, more. Uh, uh, which will be more valid assessor of the effectiveness of the drug. Uh, in this case, uh, radiography, rather than merely measuring the thickening of the uh, 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 ankle joint. So this is the second pre prerequisite, finding out the uh, uh, relevant parameter. So a little bit of explanation is now in place. Uh, let us take the example of AIDS. If we are conducting a clinical study, 
up to now i had given the example from experimental pharmacological animal testing now if we are studying a unani drug in in a clinical trial in a clinical study then there we need clinical improvement criteria so the uh, in the existing uh, clinical trial methodology the improvement criteria are mostly, uh, mostly those which are called surrogate markers surrogate means which is stands for something which is not exactly the thing but it stands for something just as unfortunately we have surrogate mothers which are not the real mothers but which carry the fertilized uh, ova of a woman uh, these are very ghastly very extreme uh, techniques and we have to have, have think many times before embarking on using such techniques that's another story for another day but uh, this will help us to understand what we mean by surrogate so most of the improvement criteria in uh, clinical studies and in experimental studies also most of the improvement criteria are what are called surrogate markers in the sense that they are not the disease itself they are something which is associated with the disease for example in aids reduced cd4 count now reduced cd4 count is not the disease at the most it is a very 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 small part of the disease because the, uh, the disease is reduced uh, immunity and reduced uh, cd4 cells is one of the means of reduction of immunity so in that way it is the disease but as you will agree with me this is a very very small part of disease so cd4 count is a surrogate marker it is not the disease itself it is something which correlates with the disease so when the disease improves aids improves cd4 counts go up so we include cd4 counts as surrogate markers but this is not the disease itself so uh, even in western medicine now it is being realized that it is better to use parameters from the disease itself so nowadays there is a tendency in uh, clinical research uh, discussions to classify the improvement criteria into therapeutic endpoints and surrogate endpoints and it is said that it is better to have therapeutic endpoints rather than surrogate endpoints so this further strengthens our hand and we can bring in the subjective unani parameters as the or even objective unani parameters like uh, deformities of the joint as the uh, therapeutic endpoints rather than surrogate markers so thickening uh, so uh, in uh, in the clinical studies we usually use surrogate markers like cd4 count i remember in one indo us symposium on unani drugs which was held in your city of bengaluru 15 years back or something the second indo us symposium i think it was 15 or 20 years back there an immunologist presented a study on an ayurvedic preparation likely to improve aids and he said that the cd4 count did not go up very well as compared to antiretroviral therapy which are the western drugs western medicine drugs antiretroviral therapy so in comparison to antiretroviral therapy the cd4 count did not go up very much by the ayurvedic preparation but the incidence of secondary infections decreased a lot and now this is the point to be appreciated that the incidence of secondary infections is the disease itself that is the disease itself so even if cd4 count is not going up but the incidence of secondary infections is declining then that ayurvedic drug should be considered to be more effective then anti retroviral therapy so from this discussion you can appreciate the issue of using proper improvement criteria these improvement criteria uh, from our point of view they should be from uh, unani mualijat uh, and from western medicine point of view they should be therapeutic endpoints rather than surrogate endpoints so here 
we come closer, Unani medicine comes closer uh, with uh, Western medicine because there also it is being appreciated that therapeutic endpoints are better. However, still most of the clinical studies as far as my knowledge goes is in terms of surrogate markers, despite the realization that therapeutic and uh, improvement criteria would be better. So we get our support from this uh, realization in uh, Western medicine. So this is the second prerequisite. The first was to find out the usul elaji by means of uh, finding the mahiyat marzi by means of translation. And the second endpoint is to use more relevant parameters. This we can find by making a very thorough study of Malijat literature. And this will give us an idea which are the parameters. For instance, in the case of AIDS, we can say that feeling of well being is an important criterion from the Yunani point of view. Because the Mahiyat Marzi uh, corresponding to AIDS would be reduction in hararat gharizia and of course uh, increased uh, burudat. This can be considered to be the Yunani correlate of AIDS. So, if uh, uh, if if there is decreased hararat gharizia or suppression of hararat gharizia, there is a sense of malaise. And if there is an improvement, there, there, is, there will be a sense of well-being. So from Yunani point of view, in the assessment of an possibly anti-AIDS Yunani drug in a clinical study, the parameter of improvement should be, CD4 count should be placed at second or third place. The most important parameter should be feeling of well-being. So this can be uh, one solution. Uh, uh, th th this can be the parameter which is more likely to give the true effectiveness of the Yunani drug uh, rather than a misleading uh, reduced effectiveness which that particular immunologist got by observing that the CD4 count did not go up. <laughs> now, please, participants, please. Uh, mute yourself. Don't disturb the presentation. So, uh, the feeling of well being can be used. And along with feeling of well being, we can also use the incidence of secondary infections. This will be a parameter which is from the Western medicine side, which is acceptable and comprehensible for. Western medicine, in their idea of AIDS, uh, secondary infections are an important part of the disease. So uh, reduced incidence of secondary infections would be from their point of view, a therapeutic endpoint, which they in principle prefer over the surrogate air, uh, endpoints like CD4 count. This is a possible uh, innovation which we can do that uh, we should use a Yunani parameter, which could be subjective. And we always uh, uh, put up our, our noses and frown on subjective parameters, but this is very, very, very wrong attitude. Sometimes the subjective parameters are much more uh, valid in assessing the true worth and value of a treatment in a particular disease rather than the objective parameters. If we have a relevant objective parameters, of course, we'll prefer them. But if a subjective parameter is more relevant to the improvement in disease, then we should not shy away from using subjective parameters simply because of the pejorative idea or uh, negative idea associated with, the, uh, with subjectivity or with the subjective parameters. So we should take up the Yunani symptom, which may be a subjective, out and out subjective parameter, like feeling of well-being. And uh, uh, we should try to take, uh, if available, if possible, we should also try to take a parameter which would be acceptable from Yunani point of view also, and which would be acceptable from Western medicine point of view also, like the incidence of secondary infections. 
And this brings me to yet another point that is the dual protocol in innovations, innovations which we need is just as translation is a very important thing in innovations, innovative approach. Similarly, dual protocol is a very important part of innovative approach. In clinical studies, of course, now I'm talking of clinical studies. I'm referring both to experimental studies and clinical studies, and I think the participants will easily understand in which context I'm talking. So in clinical studies, uh, uh, we should uh, take up the, uh, the secondary infections. And so uh, in clinical studies, we should have a dual protocol. Uh, Unani inclusion exclusion criteria, Western medicine inclusion exclusion criteria. Unani improvement criteria, Western medicine improvement criteria. These are two different protocols. So we will be observing the subjects with the help of both the protocols. And we would be making conclusions and analysis with the help of both the protocols. And then of course, we will try to relate the findings of both the protocols also. But basically we are using the dual protocol. So just as we have found in our last say 20 years or so, uh, in the in innovations which we need in order to improve the research in Unani medicine. Uh, one idea is that of translation and the other idea is that of dual protocol. Now this dual protocol presupposes that in the same patient population, we will find the Unani parameter also and we will find the Western medicine parameter. Also. This is an assumption and I think you will agree with me that this is not a far-fetched assumption. And we usually find it to be true that the same patient population has got both types of features. So this is practicable. We should uh, take up, recruit a group of uh, subjects, but these subjects are then studied with the help of two protocols, a Unani protocol and a Western medicine protocol. I, I don't want to repeat all those things which I have said earlier. And later on, of course, we can correlate the findings of the two protocols that also we can do. But that is not very important. More important is the dual protocol. And for us Unani people, the findings of the Unani protocol will be sufficient. They will be enough to convince us. And much more important than that, they will allow the integration of our findings in actual classical Unani medicine and Unani healthcare. Because in the Unani protocol, things are mentioned in terms of Unani principles and Unani terms. So the findings of the Unani protocol are assimilable in Unani medicine and in Unani medicine healthcare. Whereas the findings of Western medicine protocol are not easily assimilable. You have to, uh, you have to include it as a separate section. Uh, 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 with the very funny heading of uh, 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 I'm forgetting the Urdu counter counterpart of uh, advances ma ma such and such that that is usually a section in new books uh, ma uh, ma ma uh, uh, jadid maluma something like that. So we can record the findings of uh, Western medicine protocol only as a separate section. But the findings of the Unani protocol can be assimilated directly into the main body of Unani descriptions and Unani healthcare because they are being done in Unani terms. So for us, the Unani protocol is sufficient, not only for convincing us, but it is much more valuable for us because we can assimilate the findings of the Unani protocol right into the very body of Unani descriptions and Unani practical healthcare. Whereas the findings of the Western medicine protocol have to be recorded as a separate section, um, advances or something like that. But the Western medicine uh, pro uh, protocol is also good, is also useful because it is always good to validate a conclusion by some secondary method also, number one. Number two, which is more important, 
that the findings of that protocol will convince the mainstream because the mainstream accepts only western medicine parameters so that is the main benefit of western medicine protocol that it will convince the mainstream and the main benefit of the unani protocol is that it will allow direct assimilation of the findings into classical unani texts and descriptions and actual unani healthcare validly assimilated so dual protocol is the second very important thing after translation in this uh, uh, in, in this area of innovativeness Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, uh, unani research <clears throat> so uh, this uh, brings me to the end of my presentation and uh, Uh, i am happy that this time maybe i have taken a little lesser time than that which was allocated to me rather than always transgressing and taking more time uh, so i i i i stop over here and i don't think that i need to repeat the things which i have presented before you uh, that uh, we can uh, one very important innovation in unani drug research is to bring in inside to include the unani principles number one and to include unani parameters find out ways of including unani principles and unani parameters in unani modern unani drug research this is the title of my presentation so i think you can you you will be having uh, you uh, you will be remembering all, all the points and you will yes. be uh, recapitulating them so there is no need for me to recapitulate it thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much thank you for uh, making us understand how to do innovative research approach in humanity such as medicine by using this usule lat and mayate amras and also thank you for making us understand the translation of nearest urani pathological correlative with western diseases and also the second prerequisite what you said But, uh, that the identifying the parameters for proper assessment of diseases and sir by this we have really inspired as you said that finding of unani protocols are really uh, uh, it is easily assimilable so uh, we are very happy that only by using these protocols we can make the uh, this western medicine to understand the action of the disease now that, I, is, the, that is the dual protocol the unani the part dual. of the dual yes, protocol sir. dual protocol criteria thanks for this sir now now we will be having a question answer session so please uh, the attendees can answer can question the question to sir whatever they are having the doubts and they want to ask anything now the session is open for question question assalam alaikum wa alaikum assalam i am myself dr yunus munshi from uh, as i am working as deputy director in ccri sir uh, since you have talked about the dual protocol and i am in the research for at least 25 years and i had been working for rheumatoid arthritis which you said uh, as a as a research uh, uh, project in rrm sirnagar but one thing is there that dual protocol number one we need lot of time to be with the patient making Two uh, performers uh, case record forms, one for Unani and one for uh, this uh, modern type. Number two, that on just one drug for all the temperaments which we get uh, for for the evaluation of the uh, clinical uh, trials. So, don't you think that it it will be cumbersome for the patients as well as the doctor physician itself? that going through the dual protocol uh, i don't think that uh, the actual implementation practical implementation of the dual protocol would increase the examination time significantly it is in the thinking out thinking up the dual protocol making the studies for it 
doing brainstorming for it, reading vast Yunani literature, and then uh, brainstorming it and giving it a form of tables and uh, lists, uh, which are very clear and specific and very close to Western medicine also. It is these things in which more time will be involved, uh, rather than in the implementation of uh, the dual protocol. This is my view. Uh, I, I admit, I'm, I'm I admit I'm, that uh, I admit that uh, only 25% of my work is clinical, 75% is in experimental pharmacology. And even in this 25% work, uh, it was only lately that this idea of dual protocol came up. So I cannot claim that uh, the implementation time would not be very much uh, increased. Uh, this is uh, so I accept your question as an important question and uh, uh, one of the studies should be to assess the implementation time of a single protocol and a dual protocol this can be one, one uh, study or a few studies sir, can be uh, sir, do you think that first we should do so yes. do you think that first am I audible Yes, yes, I'm able to hear you. Uh, sir, uh, sir, don't you think that we should validate first that protocol? So I am listening to you for the last two, two decades. Uh, I'm, I'm attending your lectures. You have been always innovative and a uh, lot of new things are coming from your side. Sir, what about the validation of that protocol? First, we have to validate that so that we uh, accept uh, our theory they are, they are not still accepting our theories. Uh, I, of course, uh, I agree with you that uh, up to now, uh, our approach has been to validate the Yunani claims by the modern research method, or rather revalidate, because it is already validated, it is already scientific. We Try, we are trying to, re, the work which we are doing amounts to a revalidation of Yunani claims by the new uh, modern methods. I agree with you. This has been the thing up to now. But right now we are talking of innovations. And uh, I think you will agree that one very important innovation with very far-reaching effects, uh, two effects being uh, uh, the identification of most potential drugs, identification of drugs which have got the greatest potential, then uh, identification of the real worth and value of the treatment effect, rather than a misleading assessment of the uh, test treatment by using improper parameters. So we will get a real assessment as that immunologist got when he gave importance to secondary infections rather than to CD4 count itself. So on the one hand, we will have this great benefit of uh, finding uh, the true uh, efficacy uh, of, of a Yunani drug by using relevant parameters, which may not be the mainstream parameters from Western medicine uh, uh, point of view. And secondly, it, uh, it is assimilable in a Yunani uh, text. Yunani body of text because it is in Yunani term, so it is assimilable. Uh, and this will help in bridging the big gap uh, uh, bench to bedside, which is which problem is there in Western medicine also, that uh, the translation Sorry, your voice is on mute, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are muted. Sir, you are muted. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'm audible? Yes, sir. Ah, thank you. Thank you for pointing out. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the findings of this, uh, of the Yunani part of the dual protocol will make it assimilable. And this is a very big problem. The bench to bedside gap, which is a big problem in Western medicine also. The bench to bedside gap that a uh, lot of research is being done, but it is not relatable to clinical healthcare. So what is the use of such research? Because the ultimate use of uh, this research is 
clinical is healthcare related so this bench to bedside uh, hiatus or gap is a very big problem so this bench to bedside uh, hiatus will be decreased if we use uh, a dual protocol and the findings of the unani part of the dual protocol will help us to to more effectively take the uh, findings of our study to actual practical uh, healthcare so this bench to bedside hiatus will also be filled up so these are very big benefits that uh, identifying the true efficacy filling up the bench to bedside hiatus these are very 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 big advantages and if uh, in exchange for that we are spending a little more time in the implementation of the dual protocol i think it would be more than justified to do it but still i agree with you that this is an important question however we have to move ahead of the revalidation uh, approach and uh, now we should try to adopt an approach which is uh, uh, revalidates by using the western medicine protocol but by using the unani medicine protocol it number one uh, allows more correct evaluation of efficacy and on the other hand it allows the assimilation of the findings of the such work into actual healthcare and that is something very valuable because that bridges the bench to bedside gap and high trust so i think in light of these two very big advantages the time maybe has come to move ahead of the revalidation only approach to this approach uh, where we start getting the research findings in unani terms also in western medicine terms also by the western medicine protocol which will serve to convince the ministry which is also an important consideration although it scientifically it is not important but pr wise public relations wise this is important we want to increase the use of our medicine so that will be taken care of by the western medicine protocol but the unani protocol and i think the increase in time is not likely to look to be much but still i agree with you that it has to it should be assessed how much more time and more energy and more resources are needed for using a dual protocol instead of a a uh, single protocol i think it won't be much and in view of the tremendous advantages of making a more valid assessment of efficacy and allowing the assimilation of the findings of researches directly into practical healthcare these are very big advantages so even if there is a little more time in implementing these dual protocol it will be a more than justified so am i allowed to go for the one more question Yeah, sure. Sir, since we see uh, most of the plants have uh, proved in the laboratories that they are uh, some anti-cancer, some anti-viral, uh, uh, some. But in the clinical field, they fail to prove themselves. Uh, what is the what is the, what is the reason for that? This is a very big and vexed problem, uh, in which uh, with which people are grappling. Uh, in uh, western medicine also uh, about the clinical predictivity of uh, research findings that uh, uh, now this uh, 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 one of the explanations for this gap this gap is there i agree with you but one of the reasons for this gap is that the western medicine idea of uh, the real basis of disease is uh, imperfect for instance the single factor unifactorial uh, germ theory that uh, single factor is important in a disease number one and uh, in a large number of diseases this happens to be a germ so this is an assumption this is a theoretical assumption in western medicine and even if we are able to show the efficacy of the drug against the culprit uh, a microorganism but still in the clinical setting it does not uh, work very well so this means that our uh, our theorization about the disease basis what is the real basis of the disease that is imperfect so i think this is uh, this points to the imperfection and maybe in unani medicine uh, if we have a protocol if we have research designs according to unani parameters then uh, the predictivity would be greater because uh, unani medicine uh, uh, approaches uh, human disease and human health 
healthcare at the very holistic level, which is the level of, in simple words, which is the level of humors. Humors are very holistic. So uh, seeing a drug in terms of the abnormal domination of a humor, uh, uh, seeing a disease in terms of the abnormal domination of a humor and then testing the drug against that humor. So the finding which will come up in research that is more likely to be repeated in actual healthcare setting. So uh, I'm very happy that your question led me to another possible benefit of the Unani part of the Dubai protocol. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be more predictable. Uh, uh, that would have greater cl clinical predictivity as compared to the Western medicine protocol. I'm, I'm really happy, and this is a point so, which I have since, noted for my next lectures. And I hope that I properly acknowledge it. That from whom I got the uh, idea, from whom I got the tip. Thank you very much. Sir, uh, basically here we have the legends over here. We have Professor Sophie, we have Professor Mudud, who are from pharmacology, uh, then, then you are good self. Uh, but how can we say that a herb and they just extract, are they having the same temperament? Uh, the basic answer would be no. Because uh, Ibnisina, Avicenna, in the most uh, basic standard of Yunani medicine, al Qanun or the canon of medicine, he makes it clear that even minor changes in the drug form makes uh, big changes in the mesaj of the drug. So the basic answer would be, I think, uh, tentatively, no. But Urdu make misal hai, marta kya na karta? Ab jab zamana, zamana extracts ka aa gaya hai, bohut saare log aise hain, jo crude drug nahi lenge, extract le lenge. So let us have a second best alternative also. But that, that also effect effect not, not, not as a replacement of the classical uh, formulations, but as a second best alternative, uh, we can have these extracts. But even there, we should be uh, guided by Unani theory. Then, instance, then we'll, be having, we'll be having different uh, outcome of the, uh, of the, of the uh, effect there, of the drug. There may be differences in the effect, <clears throat> but even uh, even in going on for a second best uh, alternative in the sense that this treatment is not ideal from a Urani point of view, not very effective in terms of actual objective research, but still it compliance wise, it is, it, it, is, it will be more successful. Compliance is also an important consideration in uh, healthcare. So with this logic, we can develop these uh, extra second best alternatives for those people who are not ready to take who will not comply with the uh, whole crude drug uh, approach. But even that should be guided by theory. For instance, aqueous extracts are more acceptable from Yunani point of view. 50% alcoholic extracts are, well, okay, they can also be included. But more uh, uh, restricted extracts like acetone extract or ether extract, uh, they will be real gray area from Yunani point of view because you. Uh, the Unani principle is that the drug should be natural. Drug should be natural. And or as close to nature as possible. Because Unani medicine tried one, from 1000 years, it has been using chemistry in the formulation, like extraction, distillation, etc. Et so it is using chemistry in the development of drugs. It is making a transformation of the natural form of drugs. But even there, uh, the methods are such which take care that the transformed part or the extract, et cetera, that is, does not lose its natural character completely. It is quite close to its uh, natural character. So this is the Unani principle that the drug should be either fully natural or as close to its uh, natural uh, antecedent uh, as possible. And in that light, Equus extracts would be okay. 50% alcoholic extracts, well, okay. But uh, other more specific, more restricted extracts would be gray area and so-called active principle would be a complete no. There would be a complete no to the so-called active principle uh, uh, approach. So that's what we can begin with. So even in, even in developing, uh, I, I agree with you, 
that extracts can be used as a second best alternatives from the compliance point of view. They can be used as second best alternatives for a big part of the population, which will not take the crude drug, but which will take the extracts. But even then, uh, which extract should be taken, how it should be taken, that also should be guided by Unani theory yeah. that uh, the drug should be a natural thing or it should be and or and it should be as close to nature as possible, even if it is chemically processed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir, I would like to give one suggestion that uh, in Yunani uh, system of medicine, we have many dosage forms. So, decoction, this is the Doshanda or Khoshanda is also a dosage form. So, the drugs which we are using in the form of decoction, which, are, which has been mentioned in our literature, so for them, we can take the extract of those medicines as a research drug. For this, we can use the Doshanda or Khoshanda drug as the extract. So, now any other question from participants? Yeah. Uh, sir. sir, I want to know about the SLICO studies because nowadays, like there has been a trend increasing. Like many people, they just computerizedly they modulate the molecular formula on the SLICO studies and generalized it. Sir, will it be helpful uh, for the Unani drug development or can we generalize it? Can you please, sir, explain about it a little bit? Thank you. Thank you for this interesting question. Uh, always some new and more advanced techniques are emerging and they have a certain glamour attached to them. So we tend to adopt them. Uh, but before adopting them, we should do some, uh, th some theoretical uh, uh, study. So, uh, in silico studies are valid in the perspective where molecules are considered to be the drug rather than the whole plant. Because in, in the in silico studies, it is basically the binding of a drug with a functional macromolecule which is studied. Not the effect, but the binding is usually studied in the in silico drugs. Uh, whether a particular uh, drug molecule is docking uh, into uh, a functional macromolecule, for instance, whether a drug is uh, uh, binding with the beta-1 adrenoceptor. If it is binding with beta-1 adrenoceptor, then it may be either an uh, uh, agonist or an antagonist. So we can see that, uh, whether we can use this new drug once we have seen that it is binding with the, uh, with the beta-1 adrenoceptor. So this in silico approach is uh, more valid in the context of uh, that approach where uh, uh, the molecule is considered to be the drug. But as we have just seen that in Unani medicine, what to talk of the molecule, even more restricted extracts can be considered to be debarred from being a effective and safe uh, drug. So in the Unani context, I think the in silico approach has got a very remote and very roundabout uh, importance, but some of us can do it. For example, in uh, finding out the potential of Sopranjan, we can do in silico studies with the Colchisi uh, and with other such so-called active principles of various drugs, but we are very clear that it is not that compound which is uh, responsible for the beautiful, holistic, effective and safe uh, effects seen in Unani medicine. So usually it is not there, but of course some uh, prediction is given by the behavior of that uh, compound, by, the, by that compound, some very roundabout ways. So if not from the scientific point of view, I think from PR point of view, from public relations point of view, it won't be a bad idea to have a few in silico studies also. But I think that given the fact that in that uh, the, the tremendous uh, advantage of Unani medicine is because of using the whole plant rather than the so-called active principle, uh, the in silico approach does not have a very major role to play. Uh, in uh, research on unanimous. The same is true for nanotechnology. 
when it emerged oh it was a glamour it was a talk of the town and uh, but now the experience is very disappointing and this is true for the human genome genome uh, applications also uh, it was thought that this is a magic key which we have got will solve all our problems by gen genomic studies so these genomic studies and the nanotechnology approach they have given very little even in western science context it has given very little in healthcare in agriculture in various other fields so we have to take care that simply the glamour of a new and sophisticated technology should not take us we should evaluate it more rationally more critically whether in our setting in our particular setting this a new and glamorous technique is going to work or not so i think that the in silico approach has very little role to play in uh, research in animal medicine because in silico approach is molecule based and it is not also uh, related to the effect of the molecule it is only related to the study of the binding of the molecule to the functional macromolecule and then it is assumed that if it will bind it will have the effect also and the effect on that one single macro molecule will translate into improvement of the disease so these are so many assumptions which are especially unacceptable in the unani perspective so so i'm i'm trying to make a logical analysis so in the light of this logical analysis i don't think that in silico approach is uh, very useful for unani research thank you sir Any other question from participants? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Please, come. 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 Come कंसीडर करेंगे उसके बाद फिर मायते मर्जी और फिर मिजाज तो ये तो सर क्लिनिकल ट्रायल में समझ में आता है लेकिन अगर हम एनिमल ट्रायल की बात करें तो इंसान का मिजाज और फिर एनिमल का मिजाज में बहुत डिफरेंट है तो क्या उसको हम एनिमल के उसमें कर सकते हैं सर मतलब ट्राई कर सकते हैं जी 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 मैंने जो मिसाल आपको दी तो मैंने दो मिसालें दी जिसमें से एक मिसाल तो एनिमल स्टडीज से रिलेटेड थी और उसकी वजह ये है के एनिमल स्टडीज में इन द एनिमल स्टडीज द एनिमल टेस्ट आर कंसिडर टू बी द मॉडल्स ऑफ अमन डिजीज सो वी आर डूइंग ऑल दिस ट्रांसलेशन एंड एवरीथिंग एट द लेवल ह्यूमन बींग्स द ओनली थिंग इज दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ टेकिंग अ सिक ह्यूमन बींग एज द टेस्ट सब्जेक्ट वी आर टेकिंग एन एनिमल मॉडल ऑफ दैट ह्यूमन डिजीज For instance, uh, we have uh, uh, correlated vajol uh, mafasil sodavi with rheumatoid arthritis, but then instead of studying uh, the effect of suranjan and bisphage on two groups of human patients of rheumatoid arthritis, we have taken two groups of rats, and uh, we have produced the uh, Freund's adjuvant uh, induced arthritis in the rats because uh, Freund's uh, adjuvant induced arthritis is considered to be a good model of human. rheumatoid disease so this uh, entire exercise of translating the western pathology to unani pathology then finding out the unani usule ilaji and then finding out the test the unani test drug on the basis of that usule ilaji this will be applicable to uh, animal experiments also the only thing which we will have to do is that instead of using a human patient of that disease we will have to use a Animal test, which is considered to be a good model of that human disease. Thank you. Anyone uh, from participants? So, I think, sir, there is no one to ask the question. Thank you very much, respected sir, for a very informative lecture, valuable and very interactive and inspiring lecture, sir. And I think. this presentation has broadened our research horizon in the subject of immunology how to conduct the research innovatively thanks a lot sir thank you and i'm i'm happy to see you on the screen at least <laughs> thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir. so now at the last i would like to invite professor t sufi the organizing chairman of this webinar uh, for a vote of thanks over to sufi sir 
thank you, uh, Dr. Najib. Assalamu alaikum to all the uh, participants and our resource person. Uh, I am very much happy to uh, see the successful uh, this uh, conduct of this seminar and the knowledge and suggestions we got from our resource persons, like how to translate various concepts into modern lingua franca and a dual protocol concept. Uh, I am very much thankful for these suggestions from uh, our beloved Professor Yusuf Amin sir. And I am also thankful to Dr. Wadud sir, who gave us an idea of how to integrate modern research and uh, Yunani research in a classical way. Uh, that only one problem which uh, I would like to emphasize is we have to, for this uh, translation of these concepts, we have to go to Namaste portal, which government of India has uh, launched. And there we have all the terms of Yunani medicine and against them we have the modern terms. And uh, we have to see whether they are accurately uh, designed or not. And this will be our future research as Dr. Yusuf Indian sir has told us that this translation should be near accurate, most accurate. We should see that so that we can inform those people that this should be taken, our this term should be taken as the nearest thing to, to what we can think of as we can research it. So this Namaste portal has come launched, has been launched with the help of WHO. So uh, whatever we research, mostly Kulyat and uh, pathology people, those concepts, they should be near to our uh, Yunani concept. So we need to visit that Namaste portal. And then according to what uh, Professor Yusuf Imin Saab has told us, to translate these terms in near accurate meaning, uh, that we have to inform those people and so that we can update that Namaste portal in our way, not as what will be trusted to us. Uh, thank you, sir, very much for your information. And I thank Professor Abdul Wadud, sir, for giving us the uh, best, of the, best of the facilities for conducting this virtual seminar. And I hope that you will be available, sir, uh, Professor Yusuf Yusuf, sir, you will be available us, uh, to us for uh, discussing these vital issues whenever you can. Thank you very much, sir. I thank all the participants who have participated in this uh, virtual seminar and listened uh, patiently to our deliberations as we had only up to 12, 12 noon, we had our this seminar. And this was so much interesting that it went to 12.30. Thank you all. With this, we conclude the seminar. Thank you very much. It, it was nice to see you also, Dr. Sufi. And I'm, so, I'm sorry I could not see others and check their present state of appearance. Anyway, it was nice to see you. Thank you very much. So we, we are very sir. glad to listen to this from you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, sir.